everybody, this is Max101 and this is another episode. We have a new guest, Giancarlo Floridia or Gian... How, how does your girlfriend call you, Gian? Uh, she, she calls me all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> I know, honey, sweetie, but uh, Giancarlo yeah. or Gian? Yeah, either or. Uh, some people call me Gian. Um, Gian. Some people Gian. call me Giancarlo. Some people call me John Carlo, which is kind of the Americanized version. Is hey John Carlo, what's up? But I like Giancarlo. I mean, uh, or G. Some people call me G. So how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. It's a nice day out. Came outside and. Where Where are you in Los Angeles? Yeah, I'm in Orange County. Oh, nice, beautiful. So about yeah, 30 minutes outside of LA. Well, less now because there's less traffic. Before it was like an hour from LA. Now it's like you know less. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your band, Faith Edge. So uh, tell me about it. Uh, you have like a new. There's a new single. I saw a video, a lyric video that is called uh, "Back from This." Correct? Yes. Let's talk about it. <laughs> how, how was the lyric? Tell me about the the process of recording that single. Is that a part of a whole album? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh... The newer one that we did, um, the video was done. The guy who did both lyric videos is the guitar player from a band called Frozen Crown on our label. He has a band called Be The Wolf also. His name's Frederico. And he did the album cover, the insert, the lyric video. So he helped a lot with the artistic things from the new album that everybody's been liking. So that's right, been really that's cool. Right. I just kind of gave him ideas for the lyric video. I'm a big uh, Castlevania buff. Uh, video game. I don't know if you know about old video games. No, I'm not a video game guy. I'm a software developer, but no, no, I, I hate video games. <laughs> That's all right. I still play some, but uh, one I've always liked is Castlevania. And I said, can you get like a Castlevania type of mood meets, you know, like a churchy kind of dark. Nice. Um, he did a good job. And when the chorus pops, it kind of changes the, the vision. He did a great job. So he sent it to me. I'm like, yeah, that's it. It's done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're watching that on the background of my oh, uh, screen. Okay. Very cool, man. And uh, tell me about the lyrics. The lyrics are very deep, you know, like, uh, how did you get in the inspiration from? Thanks. Yeah, people are taking notice of my lyrics. I work a little extra hard on those. Um, I mean, back from this is things I've been through, and it sticks with you. Like, uh, back from this is pretty deep. It's about being who I am now, accepting what went down in my life, and trying to move forward. It's almost like you're taking all the negativity and trying to move ahead. Um, whether, I mean, geez, that song does have a lot of elements. One could be like maybe my dad, him and I just can't work things out, I guess. And I say, there was no working out, no changing anything. I really feel that. It's like there's some things I just cannot fix and I say when I had my soul so I'm talking about the music business in it too like before I was in the music business like a different I've changed throughout all these things and um, trying to say it's okay now like even with all the bad that's happened it's okay everything's all right mm -hmm. so it's positive but it has this dark element to it also and uh, experience I'm glad I went through what I went through good bad and different and I think that's a summary of the song, you know? Okay, okay. very cool, man. Like, uh, yeah, I, I really like those deep songs, you know? They, they're, sorry, you know, when you put a lot of your personal um, experiences, right? And, uh, because that represents a lot of people, too, you know? You can take those and own them, you know? Those concepts, those lyrics, yeah. those you know, messages. Do, yeah, and very trying to cool. do better. I'm. If you look at some of the lyrics uh, on that song, it's, I'm also talking about me. I'm not perfect. I've done a lot of stupid, dumb things. Um, I still do sometimes. I've been doing better probably the past eight, nine months. But um, it's about me, too. I'm not innocent. I've never, you know. So it's about trying to understand what happened, uh, either on somebody else's end, mm -hmm. music business end, and then getting your life to now and going, how am I going to better myself? So... How am I going to take that negative experience and make it positive now and do better and try not to make the same mistakes? So there you go. That's a good summary of the song. I, yeah, I love it. I heard, I heard you a bit, brother. Um, so this is part of the album Glee for Passion. Yes. Very cool. And where do you record this? There in LA? Yeah, the cool thing about how we do it is, uh, 
and impressive on the producers' ends that we've worked with is we record all over the world. So uh, drums were done in Los Angeles uh, when Matt started his thing. Oh, yeah. Bass was done in Arizona at Tim Gaines's place. I recorded vocals at a studio here in Costa Mesa. Alex DeRosa did all his guitars in Italy. In Italy, yeah. And then his the mixing, the mastering, everything goes to Italy, and he did everything. So we did it everywhere. And fortunately, we have a everybody's got a good chemistry. Mm-hmm. We never recorded in the same room. Some of these uh, projects will hear it, and it sounds thrown together. But we actually sound like a solid unit. So yeah, it was yeah. done everywhere. It's pretty Wait, that, cool. That's how most of the band. I, I don't want to say most of the band, but a lot of bands work today, right? So th- you, you're not doing anything different yeah, from back from then. Everybody. It was crazy, right? Back yeah. In, well, we did. Now it's like, oh yeah, because a lot of those super group projects are done that way now. Yeah. Um, some for good and bad, because some they don't. They just put the musicians together. I think we had a good batch of songs, and we all had good chemistry, so it sounds a little bit more like a band than just one of those one-off projects mm-hmm. and uh this was uh sorry uh, there's uh how many songs 10 songs and then Ten. there's a japanese version correct right so 11 for japan there's an acoustic version of uh angelic uh which we didn't i notice on a lot of bonus songs i'll sometimes just take it and remove the band and leave a piano and you know i actually went and retracked the vocals in costa mesa with a different producer because i work with jeff from suicidal to do oh, nice. all the vocals and then he moved to florida so i worked with nick who produced uh green day and avenge seven yeah. and he so, did the vocals on the, the the japanese version what was his last name from nick the producer now sparenberg okay yeah, how how is to work with somebody with that kind of experience? Um, it's cool. You, I try to learn from anybody I've worked with, uh, whether if that's Juan from Rad or Jeff or you know from Suicidal or Fabrizio Grossi from Starbreaker or Alessandro from Hardline or all these different guys I've worked with. I try to take the best of everything they've shown me. They've all shown me something, you know, mm-hmm. in some way or another. So. uh very with cool. Nick, I mean, he's a real fun-loving guy, and he's local, so that's cool. Nice. Um, I had, you know, worked with Jeff in the same studio when he was there, so I'd already known him well. He was actually supposed to do the lead vocal. Okay. And Jeff was so into the album that him and I did it together. So uh, it was nice to be able to work with both of them. They're really nice guys, so. Nice, nice, nice. Let's talk a, li- a little bit about the uh, the members of the band Fate Edge. So sure. do you want to start, uh, like, give the names and you know the instrument and a little bit of a summary of you know the the profile or the skills you know what 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 do you think is you know the best that they bring to the band you know yeah uh yeah they're just some guys <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all they're all like my family so it's cool cool, um, cool. we have matt on drums matt star you guys might know him from ace Frehley's band yes. he's, yeah. he's been playing with ace for a while now yeah uh, and then he well, he was in Mr. Big with Pat before Pat died. So they were both in the band. And I don't know what's going on with the Mr. Big situation currently. Um, I don't know. But he's definitely in Ace's band right now. Yeah. Uh, he, I know him as a friend, too, locally. Mm-hmm. He's the closest member to me. Okay. And, okay. and uh, Tim, of course, everybody. Tim Gaines from X Striper. And uh, Richard Marks. He played with Richard Marks, which is one of my favorites. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I've known Tim for... Geez, since I'm 40 now, oh, and, uh, <laughs> that's <I> mean, nothing. <laughs> man, it's brutal. Um, but I didn't age too bad, right? Right? No. Um, Tim, uh, I've known him since I was 20. So uh, bringing him on the third and fourth record uh, just kind of worked out, and uh, he's he's always going to be family, Tim. And uh, then uh, Alex DeRoso, he's um, in Italy. He used to play guitar for Dokken. He was their lead wow. guitarist for a couple of years. He plays in Push King, and he did a bunch of other uh, projects with Frontiers with um, Joseph Williams from Toto and nice. Kelly nice. Hansen from Foreign Hurricane and Pamela Moore. He did an album with from Queen Strike, Sister Mary, Alex. Is, I, I hung up my guitar on this album, man, for him. He's so good. Like I write it, but he 
I let him do all the guitars. I kind of <laughs> rendered it to him because he's so good. And in Italy, he can get the sounds he wants from his studio. Where when I recorded the other three albums here in California, mm -hmm. I was kind of on a uh, not a rush to do it, but I cut restoration our last album, all my rhythm guitars. I think in one day. This way, we were able to go. This way, we were able to go. Okay, try this amp. Try that amp. This, and I mean, you can tell the guitars are. Phenomenal. <laughs> Spinal Tap said about Ingve Malmsteen. They're like, I'll use it as a coffee table now. Alex makes me want to quit. He's so <laughs> awesome, dude. I thank you for sharing all this, you know, information about the album. That, I, that you know, I, I heard a couple of songs, but you know, you just sent me the the whole album, and I can't wait to you know dig into it. Um, tell me about your passions can be music, can be anything else that you do as a hobby? It's a good question. I mean, my passion, <laughs> honestly, lately, no, it's a really good question, is just getting it together. I've had such a bad run for myself the past 20 years, even though I've succeeded in terms of the music industry, as bad as it is, like, I've done very well the past 10 years with everything that's going on, with nobody buying albums. I was still able to put a band together, get different record deals, do interviews all over the world um but my personal life was kind of like in shambles for a good 20 years after may i turned 21 uh after my first run in the music business so i my passion is just trying to do better and not be who i was during my time in the music business and uh being a better dad and uh making some changes You know, I am 40 now. You start to look at life differently and you start to see, is that what I want to be for the rest of my life? That guy? Or do I want to be who I really am and, and pull my act together? So lately, my passion outside of music is just trying to get up every day and, and be a better person. Because for a while, I just, I'm honest, I, I was not. And uh, it's okay to admit you're wrong, but it was time for some serious changes personally in my life. But I, I feel like I'm that 20-year-old kid again that's a really motivated, loving person again. It's nice. nice. Wow, Not, dude, I'm very happy to hear that. Very yeah. happy. It took a lot of work, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting, right? It's life. Life happens, right? Yeah, like, like John Lennon said, life happens to you when you're busy taking care of other plants, right? <laughs> Or something like that. So, uh, nice. no, I, I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, Spider-Man suit, you know... Uh, when he's tearing off the, the, that black monster, demon or whatever, like Venom. It's been kind of like that for me the past, I'd say nine months, because things didn't start getting better. Maybe 10 months now, things mm -hmm. start getting better for me. Nice, congratulations, dude. I'm happy for you, and I'm happy to hear that. Let's talk about another passion that I think we both share, Kiss. Oh. So are you, are you still a fan of, of Kiss, or, or, or here and there? Or you used to be a huge fan and not anymore? Man, Kiss for me was like, when I was a kid, it was my favorite band. I used to have a Kiss collection in my room. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Like, I had a real, like belt buckles and everything. I, I kind of started falling out with them after the reunion. Once they, okay. like, started putting other guys in other guys' makeup and having guys wear contact lenses to match other men or whatever. That <laughs> It became like mm, nostalgic, and um, so I'm not into them as hardcore as I uh, was. I was really heavily into them as a teenager during the non-makeup eras and revenge era, because not everybody was into them as much. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the '80s era because I got a you know kid on MTV. So I would say from like Crazy Nights, Hot in the Shade, to like Revenge was when I was nice. hard. Like if you look at my old. Like high school pictures in my yearbook, I'd always wear Kiss shirts and stuff. <laughs> I used to people, some people would call me Ace because I would wear Kiss shirts to school so much in high school. They said then Giancarlo was too complicated for them, so they say Ace. <laughs> hey, hey, hey Kiss, hey Ace, hey Ace. Kiss or Ace? <laughs> that that happened to me too, bro. So I, well, I remember one day I was on the bus, high school, and uh, the guy in you know I heard somebody saying, "Hey Kiss, Kiss." And I turn around, dude. I don't remember your name, but I remember that you're, you're a freak. You know, you're a fan of right. huge fan of kids. So re people remember for what you love or what you have passion for, but not your name. Sometimes, you know, that was so funny. 
But uh, yeah. anyways, uh, Giancarlo, the, 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 thank you for this interview. This is amazing, dude. I, I love, uh, you know, talking about music. Yeah. Hey, tell me what's next. What's next in uh, in your professional career, you know, Faith Edge? Uh, any other project that you have around? Yeah, I'm working. I don't think he would mind me saying it now. Um, he's a really cool guy. We haven't put anything in contract, but I'm, me and uh, Gene Allen from Lizzie Borden are talking. Okay. okay. He's got a new project he's doing, and him and I are talking. And so him and I are cool now, and I think if there's going to be multiple musicians on it. Mm -hmm. So I should be on that album. I don't think he has a problem with me saying it now. Uh, I think we're going to redo some Lizzie Borden songs and do a couple new ones. He dug the face edge stuff. And then uh, I wrote two songs for the new Liberty and Justice album. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So I'm on one, and then I co-wrote some. Oh, very cool, man. So yeah. that's two things already. And then I'm just going to keep an eye out if somebody needs has a pro deal. You know, if they need a singer, I'm putting Face Edge on hold right now because it costs money to go back in the studio and I'm not ready to do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I definitely. mean, you know, right now everything going on. Maybe something will open up with the label. There was a super group thing I was talking about with somebody in my label, but mm -hmm. with this whole stuff, you don't know what's going on. But for sure, the Liberty and Justice will see the light of day. And then this thing with uh, Lizzie Borden's guitar player, I think is going to be legitimate, too. I think we're going to start working in the next couple months. I've been listening to a lot of that Lizzie Borden stuff. It's really high, and that's nice. coming. So uh, it would be in more my style of vocal. So, but I think I'm pretty like 95% sure that's going to be happening. All right. Two more questions. One: What are you listening lately? What What's the music? What bands? What What's in your queue of music? <laughs> Excellent. Right. Real time. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> okay. So, ready? Yep. Pet Shop Boys. Oh my god. Right? Yeah. Jeff Scott Soto's in here. Nice. nice. Toto. The Lizzie Borden stuff. I'm listening. Vertigo featuring Joseph Williams is in here. Nice. Uh, I'm on a Toto buff. Rat, because Juan and I are friends, and I was chatting with him the other day. I got Paul, your favorite, Paul Stanley. Uh, yeah. It's a solo album? I got both Live to Win, his solo album, um, and if you go on iTunes, there's uh, one live kiss, uh, the, the DVD. Yeah. They actually have the, the sound, uh, the 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 music from it on here. Oh, nice. I got Toshi from X Japan. He's got some solo stuff I'm going to check out. New One Desire on Frontiers, Motley Crue with John Karabi. Oh, Ed, I love it. Ed Guy Stradivarius, Debbie Gibson. <laughs> Right, dude. But that's a that's a musician. A musician listens. A true musician listens every kind of music. You know, it's not a, you're not tied to anything. You no, you I listen do. and you're open to any kind of waves and different styles and rhythms and everything else. Yes. Giancarlo, how can I reach you? If you're a musician and and I want to work with you, or if I'm a fan and I want to work or, or want to listen more of your stuff or want to know more about you, what's the best best way to reach you out or go to your websites or uh, you know, social media. Just hit me up on Facebook. There's not too many Giancarlo Floridias in America. If you <laughs> look Giancarlo Floridia, they're all located in Italy. I think I'm the only American with that name here. Okay. So you can either do that or faithsedge-music.com. But that's a way to get a hold of me. Uh, people hit me up on there. And, awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'm always ready to work. I'm hoping there's some more guys out there that want to get out there. We're in a slump right now in the music yeah, business yeah. where I'm seeing people just, they don't want to do it anymore. They don't want to write new music unless there's a pretty secure deal. I'm looking with, you know, it'd be nice to meet some people, especially in Los Angeles. You think it would be here, but it's not. Uh, so I'm interested in working with guys that want to write songs that are pro and want to get albums out there and put them out. Hopefully, they can be in Japan, they can be in Europe, they can be in Finland. I'm, I'm ready to work with them uh, because in Los Angeles, it's just, it was even before coronavirus, it's just covers, covers, covers. I'm a songwriter. Cover songs were a platform for me to write my own songs. But there's, you know, people think about money right now. They're going to make more money doing covers. So um, people don't want to write anymore. Yeah. But I, I'm that being taken out of the equation, it's, it's, doesn't it's like a nightmare so wow, but I, wow. I keep i got my stuff out there anyways and i'm yeah what's your advice for the kids that uh you know probably are watching you right now and they're want to start a band you know what's what's the message that you have for them 
believe in yourself. Leave something positive for yourself. Um, set a goal and go for it. Uh, right now, even though the big labels aren't there anymore, like for me, I went from showcasing uh, at, for, for Sony Music to going on more indie labels that still have worldwide distribution. Um, still go for it. Why not? What do you have? I mean, what do you have to lose if you're doing something productive for yourself and for others? Why quit? Even if there's not the money, do you believe in music? Do you have something inside of you that makes you want to go for it? My daughter's dad, I'm in the studio with her boyfriend and they're this and that. I'm thinking, you guys know there's not a lot of money in this. Anymore. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, but you did it. And you, I'm like, ah, uh. that was so I, I, when my daughter says that, see, it's all about that connection of music. And do you love it or do you not? Maybe yes. it will show up for her and her boyfriend and all their friends. And um, I'm not being negative. I just just be realistic about what you're getting into in the music business because it ain't pretty anymore. <laughs> Giancarlo Floridia, thank you so much for your time, bro. And uh, anytime that you need anything, right? Like if you have new material, new music, whatever you have, and you want to promote it through my channel or whatever I, I, I'm involved with, please feel free to reach out and thank you so much for your music and thank you so much for everything dude no problem thanks for the support and enjoy the rest of the record and the show looks great and keep it up man awesome bro rock and roll take care talk to you soon Woo.